this second video in the series of core python uh, this video is going to be about uh, operators so well we have seen operators a lot of times you know from the time uh, we have been in school and learning mathematics uh, there's a very similar approach to using operators in python but there are obviously because uh, this is a programming language and not you know precisely mathematics so there are some different operations as well all right so I'm using this IDE called you know PyCharm Community Edition. It's available for free. Make sure that you have watched the previous video because I'll be building upon what was covered over there. So let me go ahead and um, you know first see what are first see what is called as arithmetic operators. Uh, now this is the one that we are actually mostly you know familiar with. This is the one that we are mostly used to from our school days. For example, I just have two variables x as 2 and y as 3 all right and then let's just print out x plus y so this would basically be uh, this should give out the answer as 5 because you know this is just the algebraic sum of 2 plus 5 there should really be you know no surprises over here let's just go ahead and make sure that it works fine we get the output as 5 so things are working as expected uh, we can you know go ahead and again this shortcut is command d on uh, win on uh, mac and for all windows based machines it's control slash uh, control d i'm sorry you could replace this plus with a minus so 2 minus 3 should give you a minus 1 and the asterisk symbol is for you know multiplication 2 times 3 that should give us a 6 and 2 by 3 so 2 by 3 is 0 0.666 it terminates to i mean we approximate that to 7 let's just go ahead and run this and we indeed get the same answer right so uh, python will actually trim it down after some level because you cannot keep you know printing an infinite stream of sixes so well these are our answers these uh, this is pretty much you know how you would expect uh, arithmetic operators to normally work right uh, there are some additional arithmetic operators as well that I think you know uh, should probably be mentioned over here. One of them is x uh, star star y, so that's a double asterisk, and this is basically the exponentiation function. All right, so I'll just say the exponent or the power function. All right, um, what it does is it raises y. It sorry, it raises x to the power y. So in this case, the answer will be 2 raised to the power 3, therefore it would be 8. So if we run this, we get the answer as 8. Focus on the last one only. Uh, this is a useful one and apart from this, uh, we are going to have this one as, you know, <clears throat> x double divided by y. So there are two slashes. What this is, is basically, you know, it's a type of an integer division. Uh, I think it would be helpful if I actually changed 2 over here to, for example, something like 7. Um, and, you know, all the other things will actually go on in the as expected. This would be 10 and 4 and 28 and, you know, uh, 2.33, 343. And this value, you have to understand, this is basically what is, you know, you can think of it as just integer division or you can think of it as the quotient function. All right. So if you divide 7 by 3, what is the quotient? The quotient is only 2. I mean, think about a time when you did not know, you know, decimal numbers and all. And you would, when you divide a number by a different number, all you would get is a quotient and a remainder, right? So um, this is the quotient function. So 7 divided by 3 should give us the quotient of 2, right? Uh, do not go to decimals. So if we run this, we are going to get 2 over here, <clears throat> all right? Quotient function, some people also call this as integer division. Um, there are many names to it. You should basically understand what this operation does. And the other one which is actually quite popularly used is this is the modulus function or which is also called the remainder function. All right. Um, okay. So what is x? It's read as mod y. Mod is short for modulus. So what x mod y does is basically takes the remainder when you divide x by y. So you're dividing 7 by 3 right if you divide 7 by 3 the remainder is 1 all right keep it only to natural numbers do not or you know integers i mean do not go to decimals if you divide 7 by 3 the quotient is 2 and the remainder is 1 so you should expect the last value over here as 1 and indeed we get that as 1 so this 
is you know working as expected uh, these are you know the some of the arithmetic properties that we see uh, usually on numbers and floats um, some of them do actually you know make sense even for strings uh, but you know we will get to that one later when we will discuss string functions separately python has some shortcuts to actually dealing with strings um, after arithmetic operators now i think it's time to go to what are called as relational operators and relational operators are basically things like greater than less than equal to not equal to all right so these are things that actually tell you how does one quantity fare in relation to another quantity you know how do you compare them that sort of a thing so um, you know i'll probably comment out all of this for now uh, actually you know let me just go ahead and comment out the entire code over here and um, you know i'll just take two integers again for example something like c is it uh, yeah let's say c is equal to 4 and d is equal to 3 okay so the things that yeah that are usually you know asked over here uh, things like print is c greater than d all right so you can see that c indeed uh, you know is greater than d so what this is going to do is basically return a true remember that true is a type data type or you know is of the data type boolean so when we print c greater than d uh, what we mean is that you know take take c and take d and compare both of them and just tell if c was greater than d so line number 16 is actually the evaluation you know it, it it's the result of an evaluation okay so c greater than d will give us true because 4 is greater than 3 by similar reasoning if we do a c less than d we will get a false you know uh, let's just do c is equal d is equal to 4 as well we should still be getting a false because 4 is not less than 4 but let's say you wanted something you know more strict okay um, things like you know hey um, is c less than or equal to d so in this case we uh, we are okay with c being less than d or even being equal to d so uh, over here as both of them are equal we will get a true and even if we let's say you know made c lesser than d so c becomes true now and d becomes 4 we are still going to get true all right by symmetry since there is a less than equal to we can also put a greater than equal to make sure that you put the equal to after the greater than or the less than symbol uh, the syntax is actually important in any programming language all right so yeah if you run this one we get a false because well c is 2 2 is not greater than or equal to 4 all right um and yeah the other important property that is used is how do you actually check if two numbers or for that matter it can even work with two strings how do you check if two numbers or two strings are equal um so basically you want something like this right you want to print is c equal to d but when you do a c equal to d like this uh, what it basically means is that you know you are assigning the value that is stored in d which is 4 to the value that is stored in c so if you print out for example c now what will happen is that c would have lost its original value which was equal to uh, you know 2 and that would also get uh, th th this would also become 4 now because c has been assigned to the value of d all right so you see that we get c is equal to 4 so clearly c is equal to d is not the correct way of checking if both of them are equal all right so when you do a single equal to it is telling that set c equal to d but when you do a double equal to you are asking if c is equal to d okay so let's just go ahead and print this again this uh, the result of this evaluation or this comparison is also going to be a boolean so c uh, in this case is not equal to d so we get you know uh, false and if we set both of them equal 24 and 24 we would get it true all right um, and if you want to see if the two numbers are not equal all you can do is just put c not equal to d so not equal to is basically shown by an exclamation mark a bang equal to uh, you know this is actually the closest that you could get to probably uh, having two equal to sim you know an equal to symbol and a slash on top of it how we do in maths so i think probably that's why they use a band equal to um, otherwise you know again <laughs> that's not very important as to why this symbol was chosen uh, you should know how to compare for inequality all right 
So in this case, I leave, you know, I, I hope you should be able to guess out what is the correct answer. We get false because uh, C is actually equal to D, right? So if we are asking if both of them are not equal, then we will get a negative answer because both of them are equal, all right? So relational operators is actually, um, th th this is, you know, th this is how relational operators work. You compare one quantity in relation to the other, all right? Uh, next up, we have what are called as logical operators. Um, logical operators are, you know, you can actually work them with, um, um, you know, any, any booleans. But for now, I'll actually just go ahead and actually create two booleans. I'll comment this part out. And uh, x is equal to true and y is equal to false. All right. Let's just say that. So you should be familiar with, you know, what are logic gates over here or uh, logical you know the how gates are constructed like uh, how do you have an or gate what is the truth table for an and gate not gate or gate all of those things can be done um, we're just going to look at uh, three types of logical operators the and the or and the not all right so first of all let's just go ahead and print out x and y so i'm assuming that you're aware of the binary algebra the and function returns true when both the operands are true for example you know something that if you want to do good you know uh, in class then you have to reach the class on time and you also have to study over there so you know both of these conditions are needed it's not like you know you can just do with one of them you need both of them so in this case as one of them is false we are going to get the result as false okay so that is about um, um, you know the and let's do an or okay ignore this fellow for now Okay, so x or y is basically when uh, x or y returns a true when even one of them is true. All right, so uh, w you know we can think of it like this: both both values must be true for the result to be true. All right, let's just clear that for the result to be true. So we have explicitly mentioned it, and yeah. For um, this or, what we can say is that at least one value needs to be needs to be true again for the result to be true. So in this case, we do have an x equal to true, so we should get the answer as true for the second one. All right, this is um, th this is this happens when uh, at least one of them has the value true. If both of them are true, obviously the or is going to result in true. Um, third one that is actually used quite frequently is the not. All right, so you can just print a not x. What it just what it does is simply, you know, it uh, it toggles the boolean, which means if x is x is true, you're going to print out false. If x is false, you're going to print out true. In this case, x is basically true, so you're going to print out false. All right, let's just see that we do get false based upon these based upon you know uh, these um, things that we are learning you can actually make some complicated functions but the basics will remain the same what you're going to use is usually going to be a combination of logical and relational operators and um, you know the thing is you should be comfortable with all of them so take your time and understand each one of them individually once you have understood uh, them individually then combining them you know is is quite simple actually uh, next step what we have is increment operators so increment operators are quite simple um, you know whatever we saw in logical in the sorry in this arithmetic operators increment operators also you know uh, these sort of use that for example let's just say x is equal to 4 uh, now you want to increment let's say x by 1 so you could do and you could say x is equal to x plus 4 now see this is a sentence that this statement will not make any sense to a mathematician right because this is this might seem like a mathematically invalid statement how come x is equal to x plus 4 what we are doing over here is we are assigning the value of x plus 4 um, to x okay so let's say x was x began as 7 sorry 3 so this value is calculated first, you know, 3 plus 4, which becomes comes out to be 7. And then that gets set in this value of x. So x, the value of x is now updated to 7. 
all right so go ahead and if, if you go ahead and print out x you will see that x actually comes out to be 7 right uh, what increment operators help you do is basically write this slightly short and you can just say x plus is equal to 4 which is exactly the same thing as saying you know x is equal to x plus 4 okay um, fine let's just make x a slightly bigger number let's say we make x as 12 so now we should get the answer as 16 cool uh, now let's see the other operators so instead of plus if you do a minus it is like saying x is equal to x minus 4 so first you calculate the right hand side you do a 12 minus 4 you get 8 and that will get set in the value of x you will get the answer as 8 12 in minus 4 you can guess the other operators that we are going to do you know we are going to do a multiplication so we are now going to get x is equal to x times 4 x times 4 is going to be 20 sorry 48 so now the value of x comes out to be 48 and let's just do x is equal to x divided by 4 12 divided by 4 is 3 right and uh, we should therefore get the value of 3 uh, one thing to note here is that you're getting 3.0 and not 3 so technically speaking this is a float and not an integer and it does have some implications you know we'll see that later when we actually study things like lists and uh, tuples and so on you know wherein this might actually cause a bit of a problem okay so yeah th this is about increment operators and you know there are other operators as well which are bitwise operators but i think you know they are um, maybe you know they are not necessary for right now uh, because you know uh, it's helpful when you're actually trying to do bitwise operations which is not very common so i'll skip that but yeah you should know that there there is something called as bitwise operators as well uh, you can actually look this up if you want it's um, you know that they're fairly easy to understand but uh, you should be knowing that uh, how to convert a decimal number or a binary number to a binary number you need to have that information all right so i think with this um, you know we have actually completed this video there would have been one more there is actually one more type of operator that i would have liked to discuss something something called as you know special operators um, which in in this uh, there is an important uh, operator called as membership operator uh, but i would not introduce it right now because we have not seen things like lists and you know um, lists and how we can see a string as a list of characters so you know we are going to stop right here make sure that you have understood arithmetic operators relational logical and increment operators all right and yeah so uh, I hope you enjoy the video guys. Keep learning and I'll see you in the next one.